and welcome to my channel. I'm Mariah and today's topic is mental health in schools, told from the viewpoints of those with mental health issues. This video is one, part one of a three part video series. This video is thought based. In this video I will discuss my response and another person's experience with mental health issues in school. These responses may be either past or current experiences with mental health in schools based on the person. If you like or enjoyed this kind of content, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment or any suggestion you have below. First, for those who don't know, mental health is an invisible disability. Now let's get into this topic. Here are two responses out of four responses. And just to let all of you know, no names will be provided in order to protect people's privacy. So I will be referring to each person by person A, B, and so on. My response starts with, when looking back, I first noticed that I had mental health issues in school. I was in eighth grade and I was bullied, bullied mercif, mercilessly by a group of girls. Back then, I didn't realize that the merciless bullying affected my self-esteem and mental health in a very negative way. My response to continues with, I also was bullied in high school as well. To be honest, I can't remember a time when my mental health was in a good place at any point during middle school or high school for me. During middle school and high school, I did not realize that I could ask for help to get the bullying to stop, and I also didn't realize that I could ask any adult for help when I started dealing with depression, suicidal adults, and suicidal attempts. To be honest, back then, both middle school and high school weren't safe places, so I pretty, I'm pretty sure that I didn't feel comfortable asking for help during these difficult periods in my life. My response ends with, I've been dealing with mental health issues from the age of 14 to my current age, 30 of 30. So for the for the last 16 years, to me, school was always extremely taxing on me, both mentally and emotionally, which was wasn't good for me throughout all of my schooling, which is from elementary school through college. I've never felt that I could that I could reach the goals that schools set for everyone, like making the honor roll, the top 10 or 25% of the class, the dean's list, or staying on all of these, which seemed unachievable and would devastate me every time I wouldn't make it because it made me feel like I was never good enough to achieve anything in school. Of course, I now know that that wasn't a true statement. I hate how schools have always been performance-based. Schools being performance-based in every area like academics, tests, sports, um, attendance, awards, and so on. Took a toll, a major toll on my mental health in a negative way, especially when I didn't succeed in the way that I wanted to. It's more important to focus on, a, on the student's mental wellness rather than how well he or she performs in school or at sports. And this is the next person's response. Person A's response starts with, I don't know exactly how what to talk about, but most of my complex PTSD is from school-related trauma. It's literally hard for me to attempt math without risking a panic attack. Schools have hurt my mental health more than anything, sorry, more than much of anything else. I'm learning not to place my value in inability and trying not to pressure myself to succeed especially on the same timeline as peers. But it is a process. Person A uh, response is, well, sorry. Person A's response ends with, schools weren't set up for disabled people. It was a hard and recent fight to get disabled people access to school at all. And now that we are in, for many disabled children, it means early exposure to very harsh ableism. It's part of what drives me to school abolition, or I'm oh, sorry, abolition. 
Schools were set up to feed capitalism and make factory workers. For disabled students, that means being seen as less productive gets you treated poorly, and things like mental health issues are treated as a personal problem in a way of production. I hope disabled people, especially kids, can learn not to value themselves on the standards schools have set. Getting a bad grade doesn't hurt anyone, and a student's well-being is far more important than a some number or letter. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will share... Um, uh, please share your honest thoughts about this topic in the comment section. As some of you may know, I have problems with pronunciation, which is because of my learning disability. I don't try to hide this because I want people who have similar struggles to know that I, they are not alone. No matter how hard pronouncing some words can be, I will always try my best. Those are the reasons I keep my mistakes in these videos. I know some of you may not like that, but I'm sorry. I'm always open to any suggestions you have for any future video topics. Please let me know what they're in the comment section below or on my Twitter page. And my Twitter handle is at Burley Mariah, and that's my last name, then my first name. And I can spell it for you at B-U-R-L-E-Y-M-A-R-I-H. Next video will be on mental health in, in schools part two, told from the viewpoints of those with mental health issues. I will include the link for part two, um, part two of this three-part video video series in the video description box once I film that part. I hope everyone's continuing to stay safe. I'll post my notes in the comment section for anyone who needs them. Again, please like, share, and subscribe if you want to and found this video to be helpful. Feel free to share this video with anyone you think might need it. If you want to be notified before when I do any live streams or upload any new content, you'll want to click the bell icon and select the all options under the bell icon. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Bye!